Methotrexate is uh, the cornerstone treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. The mechanism of action of methotrexate is uh, acting at the molecular level. So it acts on the B cells, the T cells, and the cytokines to reduce the amount of um, inflammatory substance in the synovial fluids. Considerations of drug interactions with methotrexate uh, need to consider alcohol administration along with um, methotrexate due to um, liver toxicities. The side effects for methotrexate uh, most common are GI in nature, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. We could also see uh, some mouth ulcers. There could be CNS side effects, uh, dizziness and headaches. And there's also a phenomena that could happen in some patients. It's called a methotrexate fog. And this generally happens within 24 hours of the weekly methotrexate dose. The majority of these side effects can be alleviated by uh, providing the patient with uh, folic acid uh, supplementation. So it'll be one milligram uh, a day or five milligrams a week. Most patients generally uh, go for the weekly uh, dose uh, because their methotrexate is dosed once a week, so it's more convenient. For the mouth ulcers, uh, we can treat mouth ulcers with uh, lidocaine, a swish and spit, so uh, these side effects can be managed. Some patients may find that they have less side effects with a subcutaneously administered methotrexate. Uh, this would have less of the uh, systemic effects, uh, so we may find that subcutaneous administration is uh, warranted when patients are having too many side effects with the oral dose. Subcutaneous methotrexate does generally require prior authorization. Uh, this is uh, interesting, we think, because the guidelines are silent uh, to the dosage form. Uh, so we're, we do find that uh, with the branded uh, products for subcutaneous administration that we require prior authorization. Now generally those prior authorizations would include um, side effects that the patient can't tolerate on the oral forms and then movement over to the uh, subcutaneous forms. So again uh, to clarify that would be the branded products that are uh, subcutaneous that we're seeing prior authorization uh, requests for. What we find is uh, the majority of patients who are on subcutaneous methotrexate started on oral methotrexate. Now, in the studies, we can find that there is advantage of starting patients on injectable uh, methotrexate. So it would help if we had the guidelines that would um, differentiate between oral or subcutaneous administration of methotrexate, but today we don't have that. So uh, we would look for uh, some education around patients that could benefit from the subcutaneous administered methotrexate. Many of the patients that we see who are on subcutaneous methotrexate are patients who um, have either caregiver issues with um, uh, administering the, the methotrexate or uh, they have rheumatoid arthritis where it affects the joints, the hands, and uh, it may be difficult for them to administer um, a subcutaneous form. So we see those patients moving over to a branded uh, subcutaneous product that may have some type of uh, delivery advantage, uh, such as an auto injector. This can help those patients where they have uh, difficulty in administration. Uh, safety and efficacy for subcutaneous uh, administered methotrexate is about the same as orally administered uh, methotrexate. And um, as far as adherence to the medication, you know, what we find is the more educated the patient is, whether it's around uh, the injection of the product or taking the product by mouth, the more uh, uh, educated the patient is on the uh, value of the therapy, uh, the more compliant they are to the therapy. Adherence to subcutaneous methotrexate is very important. So one of the things that we want to make sure is that the patient fully understands the value of the treatment and the value of that weekly injection. So the role of the specialty pharmacist is to reaffirm the injection site training, make sure the patient fully understands how to do this injection site training, and then as far as compliance, that they understand the value of that weekly injection in helping to control their disease. You know, as the patient um, 
receives the benefits of methotrexate, uh, their symptomatology is going to become better. And we have to make sure the patient understands that the patient needs to continue that weekly injection in order to uh, control those uh, symptoms. As a specialty pharmacy, we work with the prescriber and the payer to help that patient to gain access to the branded products for subcutaneous uh, methotrexate administration. Now, many times we need to work with the prescriber to look at the patient's previous history, what they tried, what they failed. Um, today, methotrexate is available in a vial, and uh, we can have the patient administer that by pulling up the uh, product into syringes and self-administering. Uh, at times, this procedure doesn't work for some patients. Either the rheumatoid arthritis in their hands makes it difficult for them to use the vial and syringe. And in this case, uh, it would be very appropriate for that patient to move on to some of the branded products that have addressed this issue. So some of the branded products uh, have uh, auto injectors that are very easy for these patients to use and it helps them uh, to stay compliant to the medication and also uh, self-sufficient. So the specialty pharmacy is working in between the prescriber to look at what the patient's tried and failed, and then filling out the appropriate prior authorization uh, paperwork necessary uh, to prove that the patient's uh, tried and failed these products, really to provide supportive information uh, so that we can get access. So from the payer's perspective, um, the payer wants their patient to be compliant to therapy. The patient knows that they have a patient who is diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, they want to make sure that they're getting the right drug to the, to the patient. So uh, we don't see huge barriers when we're trying to get these branded products um, approved for patients, but we do need the appropriate documentation. Working with the payers uh, to show how patients are doing on treatment is really a um, uh, overall rheumatoid arthritis profile approach. So the payer will get reports on the different um, uh, ways that the patients are administering. So patients are administering these products subcutaneously um, or orally or through IV. And then within those subcutaneous administrations, the payer will look at um, durability on those patients and then see how those patients are doing with other um, resources that they're using. So some of the very interesting ways to look at return on investment is really to look at how compliant the patients are to drug therapy and then compare that to the overall utilization resource from a payer perspective. And I think this is the way that we can look at uh, patients using methotrexate as being uh, very uh, uh, cost efficient uh, for the payers. For patients who are on uh, methotrexate therapy, uh, it's very important to make sure that the prescriber is uh, kept in the loop. So an entire continuum of care uh, concept that really provides that information back. Uh, typically, the prescribers get alerted when we have um, adherence issues or when patients have issues with administration of their uh, medications. So really it would be in this area that the patient would notify the pharmacy that they're having difficulties in administration. It may be uh, some opportunity uh, to alert the physicians that there may be an opportunity for uh, a better way to subcutaneously administer these products for some patients.